esteemed friend, Captain Uttam Kumar Reddy, President of the Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee, Shri P. Chidambram, Shri Jairam Ramesh, Dr. J. Geeta Reddy, Shri P. V. Manavar Rao, ladies and gentlemen, Namaskar. I am extremely happy that the Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee is holding year-long Perth Centenary celebrations of a great sin of the soil, our former Prime Minister, late Shri P. V. Narsim Rauji. I consider it a great privilege to inaugurate these celebrations today. I am particularly happy that this program has been organized on a day on which I had the privilege as the Finance Minister of India for presenting the first budget of Shri P. V. Narasimha Rao Ji's government in 1991. The government took office just after the sad demise of Shri Rajiv Gandhi Ji. I had said in my budget speech referring to Shri Rajiv Gandhi that he is no more but his dream lives on, his dream of ushering India into the 21st century, his dream of a strong, united, technologically sophisticated but humane India. I had dedicated that budget to his inspiring memory. It was a budget that changed India in many ways. It ushered in economic reforms and liberalization. It was a hard choice and a bold decision, and it was possible because Prime Minister Narsim Rauji gave me the freedom to roll out things after he fully understood what was ailing India's economy at that time. On this day, while inaugurating his birth centenary celebrations, I pay my humble respects to the man who had the vision and the courage to push these reforms. Like Rajivji, Narsim Rauji, too had great concern for the poor of the country and had told the then managing director of IMF, Mr. Michael Kondesu, that reforms in India would have to be mindful of Indian concern. In economic reforms were preceded by a push in that direction when Shri Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister. Before that, Shrimati Indira Gandhi herself was able to grasp the importance of reorienting our economic policy. But real tough decisions had to be urgently taken in 1991 as we were faced with a foreign exchange crisis with foreign exchange reserves down to about two weeks imports bringing the nation to the edge of a precipice. But then politically it was a big question if one could take hard decisions to meet the challenging situation. It was a precariously placed minority government which was dependable, which was dependent on outside support for stability. Yet Narsim Rauji was able to carry everyone along, convincing them with his convictions, enjoying his confidence. I went about my job to carry forward his vision. Victor Fugu had once said that no power on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. I suggested in my budget that India's emergence as major economic power was one such idea. There was an arduous, there was an arduous journey ahead but it was time to let the whole world know loud and clear 
that India was now wide awake. The rest is history. Looking back, Narsim Rauji can truly be called the father of economic reforms in India. Hailing from the Krimnagar district of Telangana, Narsim Rauji had embarked on a long political journey starting from the days of freedom struggle. He was first elected as an MLA in 1957, was a minister in 1962, and the chief minister of the combined state of Andhra Pradesh between 91-1973. He had very actively pushed land reforms in the state. Thereafter, he was a union cabinet minister holding several important portfolios as Minister for Human Resource Development between 1985-1988. He was responsible for the National Policy on Education 1986. It had envisaged the setting up of Jawar Navrodhya Navrodhya schools in the country to bring out the best of our rural youth. Economic reforms and liberalization were indeed his biggest contribution, but his contribution to the country in several different fields cannot be underestimated. On the foreign affairs front, he made efforts to improve our relationship with our neighbors including China. India signed the South Asian Preferential Trade Agreement along with the SARC countries. Then the Look East policy was also his brainchild to link India with East and Southeast Asian countries. It was also under his leadership that the Indian space program got an impetus with the successful testing of the augmented satellite launch vehicle and the polar satellite <coughs> launch vehicle. India also successfully tested the Prithvi missile to strengthen and enhance external security capabilities. He had also asked late Dr. APG Abdul Kalam in 1996 to get ready for nuclear tests to take India to join a new League of Nations, which were later conducted by Prime Minister Vajpayee led NDA government in 1998. That was indeed a difficult era in politics. Endowed with a cool temperament and deep political prowess, Narsim Rauji was always open to debate and discussion. He always tried to take the opposition into confidence. To cite a few examples, he had deputed Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayeeji as the then leader of the Indian delegation to the UN Human Rights Commission in Geneva to discuss Pakistan's sponsored resolution to censor India on its record of human rights in Jammu and Kashmir, which was successfully thwarted. He had also nominated Sri Subramanian Swami as chairman of the Commission on Labor Standards and International Trade with the Cabinet rank. Narsim Ravji left behind an unmatched legacy of being a linguist well-versed in several Indian and foreign languages and was indeed a great scholar. He was one of the first converts to new technologically oriented program by not only becoming adept with using a computer, but also because became proficient with programming techniques. This was possible because he was always willing to learn new things. 
In conclusion, I once again pay my tribute to the memories of a great leader, a great son of our country, our former Prime Minister Shri Narsim Rauji, who was a friend, philosopher, and guide to me in many ways. Jai Hind.